Ah, howdy all out there in Cyberland. My name is Marlon. The channel is Old Fart Hacks. And um, what we're going to be doing today is looking at this. This is one of them there Chinese XY tables. This is the second one I've had. The first one went back because the ring here had failed on its uh, nickeling and was rusted up as was this ring. Also, when I tightened up the shaft here, um, it locked up the table. So, shall we proceed? First thing, does it have rattle in it? Oh, yeah. This one's a little better than the first one. The first one, the, the ways over here, the gib was absolutely loose. This one at least is snug down some. Again, whenever you're handling one of these things, be careful. They are, they don't clean up the edges at all. And so these things are sharp. And when I mean sharp, I mean they will cut you. So let me, since I'm getting bit over here a little bit, let me at least take that one off. Well, that's a little better. Anyway, so, as I said, the gibs seem to be a little bit better here. At least they're snugged up and the lock screws are in place. And all the wobbles in the knob. The knob is wobbly, as you can see, and going in and out, which means the bearing pack in here is not properly set. So let's start this one just by, because I'm curious about this, and if I'm going to have to send this one back, the knob. Apply Chinese wrench to Chinese junk, and take the knob off. A lot of them. Sorry. Hit the camera stand. It's the only trouble with doing these uh, videos where literally we're doing a point of, you know, the first point of view is the camera stands do get in the way. And we'll put the knob over here in the answer to everything, which is, of course, 42. A42, B42, C, whatever. Okay, and then the knob. It pulls off. Here we have the outer bearing race, the bearing, and the inner bearing race. And they are installed properly, so, but I guess before I do much of anything, I really should do something. Let's see. Oh, and this is much better than the first one. This, On the first one, this was loose. This one at least is snug. Tight, I don't know, but snug. Where's the keyway there? There it is over there. Let me see what happens. I should have done this the other way. I should have tried tightening this up first. There we go. I think we're going to run into a similar problem. Well, first one, when I tighten this nut up, as you should be able to tighten it up to get it onto the bearing, get the bearing pack to be Catching the bearing pack, by the way, there's a bearing on the back side, a bearing on the front side. You then tighten up this nut to press on the bearing on this side, pulling the bearing on the other side in, and that gives you your uh, your motion, your you know, your end control here, leaving the only the slop in the um, in the uh, nut, which the screw in the nut, which. Trust me, there's going to be enough slop there without any other slop. But I, since that this was loose, let's see what happens when we tighten this up. Yep. That's pretty much the case. When you tighten it up, it locks it up. These holes are threaded so neatly, too. Wouldn't surprise me if I can't thread this in. Because it doesn't want to start. There we go. The angle is not quite square. There. Yeah. That's binding. That's better than the first one. The first one was absolutely bound up. Well, there's play in that wheel, but yeah, this binds up, and that should not bind up. This should move smoothly. It's on ball bearings, for crime any sake. Now, could the gibbs be over tight? Well, let's loosen the gibbs all the way up and 
see it, huh? Oh, well, it may just be the ways are screwed up on this one. But that's still too tight. But this one's at least livable. I could possibly do something with that. A shim underneath, on top of the bearing pack. That bearing pack we just had out. Pulling this out a little bit would allow me to loosen that up and get freedom of motion. So again, let's go a little deeper here. Let's go ahead and take out... Somebody tighten that thing up. I wonder who did that. Let's go ahead and pull this wheel off and see if I'm going to throw this one back immediately. The criteria for that will be if this uh, measuring ring is rusted. The last one was badly at that. The uh, nickel plating had failed. So, let's see here. And again, as you're handling these, once you first get it, everything is sharp. Okay, anyway, this is the wheel. Here's their friction element. It's a piece of tape. Uh, again, the nickeling's not the best. I don't know if you can see it, but it really drops off here to just bare steel. Yeah, off camera things a bit, you know. Oh, that's got a lovely sharp edge on it, too. Oh, well, that might clean up. At least there's no rampant rust there like the last one had. The nickeling seems to be a bit better. Although, again, I think you can see the mottling of the surface here, and that should not be yeah the nickels failed there but this is not seeing the damage the other one did okay and again there's a bearing race here what i'll have to do to make this work properly is put a shim on this surface right here between that and here to pull this out the friction element, by the way, is this piece of tape, and talk about, uh, so what I'm going to do if I keep this one, is I'll drill a small hole about here, you know, getting into the web here instead of the web here, as close as possible to here, I'll drill a small hole, drop in a small spring and a ball bearing, and I'll take this tape off, and that'll give me all the friction I'll need. And in, anyway, to the bearing race. As you can see, your little handy dandy, absolutely cheap Chinese ball bearing. I could use a little bit of grease. Let's get the key out of here. And for those of you wondering who've run around my channel enough, if you're wondering how we're doing with the uh, running board on the navigator, well, I've got the parts, the new bearing set coming from China. I'm going to get, I broke these trying to take uh, the running board thing apart. Oh, come on. Ah, key is out. We'll drop it in the ring so we don't lose it. Everything's in the ring. Ring ding -a ding. -a. Now, did I leave out the right size hex key? No, of course not. This is, if memory serves me, a five millimeter. It's either the five or the five five. It's the five. That's still not all that tight. Um, one of the other problems I'll show you in this thing in just a second uh, is how they uh, <laughs> do these holes. Um, at least on the last one, they didn't even bother. Oh, okay. Well, only one of those nuts was tight, or screws was tight. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. I don't know if you can see down in the hole and make it out, but this is not a flat bottomed hole. That's just drilled, with, so it's got a 60 degree cone on it. Well, nasty on the back side. I'll probably turn that slightly just to clean that up. I mean, nasty saw cut that could have cleaned that up. Here's the inner bearing pack. It's a smaller one. Well, this Overall, this one's better so far. The last one, the first one, this shaft was so rough through here, I couldn't even pull the bearings off. Again, you know, your needs grease. Really needs grease. But at least the screw turns fairly easily. This one has a chance of staying here. Sorry this takes so long. I, I could stop the camera, but for 30 seconds or 25 seconds, it's just it's one of those questions. Do you do that or do you not? And I want to show you something with the screw here. So if you'll just bear with me for a few seconds. I'm trying to keep this as quick and fast as possible. The bearing stack up works as this. You have the inner set, which bears on that shoulder. You have the ring, let's see, it goes on that way, which the inner set rides on. So pressed here, the screw cannot go that way. And then you have the outer set, which the knob is then screwed down on. So that when all is said and done, you've got this ring trapped right in between there, and there is no slop. This is actually can be set up for virtually zero uh, backlash. Anyway, we'll look at a couple more things, and then we'll, we'll call this video because it, it will run long. This is going to be a two or three video sick or set like the last one was. Anyway, let's go ahead and pull the white or. X and Y, eh, you know, arbitrary in these machine or in these things. This is how the Gibbs are set up. Single drill point, messy as all heck. Yeah, I may may uh, what what I'll do here is I'll drill the other two holes out. Of course, this is your drive nut. Isn't that lovely? Uh, be careful again. The edges here are. Nasty. I'll pop, pop that in the lathe and run it out a little bit. Gib. Some people like to move that over because they want to run the handle off the other side. For me, it doesn't make much difference. I'm going to mount this up on my little drill press with this as the x-axis. And I'll just... And I, so I run it from the left-hand side. whoop de doo and this will be the Y, of course. Now, as to the table. Yep. Oh, lovely dent there. I don't know if you can see that, but yeah, lovely dent. This is going to need cleaning up, filing, stoning, and everything else to be really useful. I'm being very gin ginger as I handle this because, you know, I like ginger better than Mar or I like Marianne better than... Anyway. Marianne Ginger Gilligan, you know, that whole nasty thing. Uh, so shall we take a few more seconds and look at the condition of the ring, the, uh, oh, that's stiff, the indicator ring here. Yeah, let's pull that off, and that'll probably be the end of the video for the night. That'll tell me if I'm sending this one back or not. I mean, I can get a washer to fix the uh, gap issue, so that's not a problem. Again, dry as a bone. They are not, they don't grease them.
bit of rust through here. Really, really poor plating. Well, this one's acceptable at least. So this one is not going back immediately. I suspect this will actually be the table I'll keep. Time will tell. Anyway, that's all we're going to... Oh, good Lord, talk about rough. And this is a sliding surface. I mean, this is the, literally the working surface, either that or that. I'm not sure which of these surfaces will come into contact first. I guess it's these surfaces right here. Anyway, this is also better in that it's not painted three-quarters of the way across here. So this is a better a better one than the last one I got. Anyway, guys, gals, and whatever else, that's about all we're going to do for right now. We'll go deeper into this and start the cleanup process over the next few days. So I wish you all a good evening, morning, afternoon, whatever it may be. Again, my name's Marlon. The channel's Old Fart Hacks. And if you would, please hit the like and maybe even the sub subscribe button. I hope you all have a good day. Bye-bye.